assembling ourselves in your name and your place, Lord, under your spirit, Father, and into your word, realizing that it's only too true how we sing all things are possible now that you hear, for as the prophet said, your purpose in these last days is being completely fulfilled, that which you had planned sovereignly in your mind, and that which you had in the form of the Son died upon the cross to attain is now brought to pass in these last days, coming right into full fruition, Lord. And here it is, what the sages look for, what the prophets look for, what even you look forward to, and all of these things now come into full fruition. We're very grateful for that, Lord. We pray you'll settle our hearts and our minds now together, Lord, to just calmly, sweetly, certainly go into your word. And I'm not looking to offend anybody, but Lord, if anybody's offended, may it be because of your word, Lord. But we hope, Lord, that none, that shall not be the case this morning, and none offended in you, although we know that you're perhaps the most easy one in all in the world to be offended in, because man's never learned your ways and learned what real love is, learned what real truth is. But, yeah. Father, we're open for that this morning. If we're not, help us to be open to it. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. May your God reveal. <clears throat> and last week we were still considering a major truth, which was, of course, that only the predestinated seed are capable of receiving God's revelation. Now, that, of course, is going to be something that people just don't like. They don't like the thought of, of predestination. Remember, the Roman Catholic Church, which, of course, is a spokesman now for Christianity, they have the greatest number of members, and uh, already America is a, is a Catholic nation, a Christian Catholic nation. And they speak and they say, if any man can surely say that he was predestinated to be born again, let that man be cursed. That's the, uh, and when you add the multiplied number of millions of Protestants to that, you can see where the world stands. They would say, all right, you, uh, we can't believe that. We can't believe that man is predestinated one way or the other. Uh, you come to the place where silly Pentecostal women who wrote a magazine years ago in there said that the Jacob and Esau uh, delineation was simply an illustration of the two natures. It had nothing to do with God really predestinating individual people. So that's much, so much for women Pentecost to preach. They're Roman Catholics and don't know it. You know, you'll find out one of these days, brother, sister, the prophet didn't make mistakes. Amen. You'll find these things that he said were so perfectly bent. It just takes a little time to gather them in. So, all right, we're considering the major, one of the major truths, and that is that only the predestinated are capable. They have the ability to apprehend and to comprehend God's revelation. And that great mystery, which is his revelation, had to come first by revelation to the prophet. There again, you will find those that do not agree. But the seven church ages, if people believe the Bible at all, and remember, the, the book of Revelation only came into the holy canon by, I think, one vote or so. <clears throat> I don't remember the exact figures, but they almost rejected the book of Revelation. So we don't think it's something that we can use. But it has been vindicated by God himself to be his book. It's peculiar. It's almost like the Ten Commandments that that Moses, that God wrote with his own finger till Moses destroyed them. Very peculiar, very wonderful book. And they can't believe that uh, Revelation would come by a prophet. And, but as I say, they don't recognize the seven church ages in the book of Revelation, chapter 2 and chapters 2 and 3, wherein there's a message to every single age, and there's a messenger to every age, and it says, unto the messenger... It deliberately says, this is only to the messenger. And it all closes with, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The churches, the people in the church cannot get it outside of the man that God designated. Amen. And in the case of Paul, a prophet, and in this hour, another prophet also. <clears throat> now, the, others, the other people, uh, in the time of Paul and down to this hour, and our hour here, have caught the vision as the prophet explained it. So it comes, first of all, to a prophet in God's ordained order, and it comes to the people as it's explained to the people. Remember, God must have somebody on the scene always before he comes on the scene, except in the original, when God was on the scene to make man. God was right down here. Now, you call it dimension, call it anything you want. I'm not arguing with anybody, because I think, I think the people who want to argue with me are a little ridiculous. And there's no point in arguing. The Bible said they were looking up. A cloud. Clouds aren't here. They don't know. Dimension. That's a dimension too. <clears throat> How big is the dimension? I don't know and I'm not going to argue the case. Quote anything you want to quote. But you, 
you know, we're looking at the fact that the demand, God came down here because that's where the earth was, and he placed his feet on earth because the Bible said he has hands and has feet. Uh, what that's all about, I'm not prepared to say. But it shows that God had definition. He's not an amorphous chunk floating around. Yeah. He has some he had definition. So therefore he formed man of the dust of the ground. There he was, all formed up. And then it said God came down because the man was there and walked and talked with Adam, right? In the cool evening. Amen. So God always has a man to work with. So the prophet must be on earth when Revelation 10 and 1 takes place. Right. Revelation 10 and 7 has to be here. And it was indicated that he was God's boy by the fact that a little light formed over his crib. And then later on, God began to appear to him. And God had to explain himself to William Branham, the same as God explained himself to Moses and to Paul and anybody else he, that he apprehended. See? then that person always has something to take to somebody because God does not have a prophet for God himself. The prophet is a Charlie McCarthy. <coughs> yeah. You want to know the truth? He's a literal Charlie McCarthy. As Edward Bergen put the words in Charlie's mouth and manipulated the dummy, so God takes a dummy man and manipulates him. Yeah. Yeah. Because the prophet themselves did not even know what they were saying. Now, when that prophet has a message for that specific hour, he might have one for way down the road. And if he doesn't know what he's saying, then the fellow down the road, sure as high heaven can't, cannot possibly know what he's been, what's been said. Because if I don't know what I'm saying, how are you going to know what I'm saying? Right. I'll bring my wife on the seat. <laughs> <coughs> She'll interpret me. She doesn't ever do that. <coughs> but you understand what I'm saying? So, all right. The prophet brings the message. Now, who is the message to? To the people. So you see the perfect order. Thus set the spirit to what? The messenger. And the messenger now talks to the people, and the people now have thus set the spirit. Amen. And if it's a case where there must be <clears throat> the definitive proof of God, the prophet receives the vindicated proof of God, then he brings God's vindicated proof of him to the people so that they know it is God speaking in and through the man. Because God's in man. But that's the way it goes. Amen. People don't like that. <clears throat> so we say here, the prophet explains it. Now, the example Brother Branham used was mainly the Apostle Paul. He used different ones also. Now, Paul, by revelation only, was greater in revelation and in steadfastness to that revelation than all the other eleven were who had been with Jesus physically true. <clears throat> now, I know we don't have a record of John being messed up, but there's no record of John not being messed up. Because when those apostles got together <clears throat> with those people that shouldn't have been got together, they were carried away with their dissimulation, called false brothers. That's interesting, false brothers. We got false prophets. We've got false apostles, we've got false teachers, and we've got false pastors, and we've got false brethren. You see what about evangelists? They're false too, because they got a wrong gospel. The gospel of this hour is not that Jesus simply died upon Calvary. It's the risen one is here now to get out of bride. Amen. You know, go preach that stuff back in the days of the apostle Paul, and Peter, what, he's just freshly risen? No way, shape, and form. The one that rose is now on the throne, perfecting the whole order of the Melchizedek priesthood to the epitome. <coughs> and the Holy Spirit himself, that Jesus that spoke to Paul, that spoke to Abraham, is here now before the fire, getting us ready to meet the physical one in the air. We ain't never going to get nowhere this morning, brother. Forget it. Forget it. Let's go and see some scripture here. <coughs> All right. Here, speaking of back in the book of Hebrews, let's read it. God in sundry times and divers manners spake in time past in the, uh, unto the fathers in the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us in son. That's now in the form of sonship in the office, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. I can prove that's God in the form of sonship because Paul did not meet Jesus in the flesh. He met him here in a pillar of fire. Yeah. And 
The same Paul that met him in the pillar of fire that took this word down says in the Hebrews, the 12th chapter, the voice is going to speak one more time, the voice from heaven. And what is the voice from heaven? Not man's voice down here, but the one that comes down, the Holy Spirit, that gives the revelation. Amen. So you got it. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his substance. Now, image is an icon. An image is not the real thing. It's copied after the real thing. <clears throat> so we got an image here which is an outrage. In other words, he gave, he gave substance to that which cannot be seen, though in itself is substance, because spirit is substance. If you don't think it is, the devil could be here this morning, a, a spiritual devil, a spirit, and hit you so hard you think a ton of bricks fell on you. Smack your teeth in and then you prostrate on the floor. It's been done and it's being done. Forces of evil. And I'm not talking about electricity gone rampant either. I'm talking about factual things. Don't worry, those things are being done. <clears throat> and so God, Jesus, was the substance that man could see, making God sensate, the spiritual substance of God, which is spirit, <clears throat> making that sensate. Now, he's the express image of his person. He's the perfect expression, the expression of his substance. When he had by himself purged our sins, sat down in the right hand of the majesty on high. Now, who was it? Who, who bled and died? A man? Certainly. <clears throat> a man that came, as it were, from the loins of God. Brothers, don't let that sound strange to you. I'm not making God a sex creature. Because the loins of the mind are spoken of the same as the loins of the groins. And things like that. So you better understand in other words, I'm telling you something that's really true and vital and beautiful. That this happened, God himself is doing something. God is involved. He's the only begotten. Beget means to cause to conceive. Mary gave birth. But the Holy Ghost caused the conception. The Holy Ghost did not cause the birth. Except in the sense he caused the conception and ran its course. She gave birth. It issued forth from her. That's the finished product, which was the baby they were looking for. <clears throat> Being made so much better than the angels, as he hath, the, hath an inheritance obtained a more excellent name than thee. For under which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again I'll be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again when he bringeth in, in the firstborn into the world, he said that all the angels of God worship him. And of the, and of the angels he said, who maketh his angel spirits and his ministers a flame of fire, but unto the Son he said, Thy throne, O God. Somebody is calling Jesus God. Yeah. Let's keep reading. Is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is, thy, is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hate thee. Therefore God, even thy God. What about you? got two gods? No, you got one God. When you're talking of Elohim, there's only one. Amen. Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word, the Word is with God, and the Word was God. And everybody's saying, because the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. No, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. Amen. And the Word was God. They're throwing the emphasis in the wrong places. Brother Brandon said, if you make Jesus the Word, you've got a couple of gods tearing your face. <coughs> what are you looking at? Going back to the beginning of one God, there is one God. Let's, let's, let's go to, it says here, Therefore thy God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with oil and gladness above thy fellows. <clears throat> and then down here, we verse the second chapter, the ninth verse, we see Jesus, made a Lord in the angels, and so on. <coughs> and that says in verse 11, For both he that sanctifieth, and they who are sanctified are all of one. We all came from God, from the source, the great sanctifier. For both he that sanctified and the sanctified one, which cause he not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren. And Mr. Church, when I sing praise unto thee, he doesn't sound going to sing no praises. And again, I'll put my trust in him. And again, behold, I am the children which God hath given me. Are you confused? Well, I'm sorry you're confused. I'll deconfuse you. We'll go to 11 chapter 1 Corinthians, where there's no confusion whatsoever. <clears throat> we read in there the very beautiful scripture. Now I praise your brethren, verse 2, you remember, in all, you remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances I've given you. For I would have you know, the head of every man is Christ, and, and the head of every woman is man, and the head of Christ is God. <clears throat> so there 
very young. I don't preach two gods. I preach one God. Amen. Amen. I'm going to tell you something. You're going to find out on that day that this one we're talking about, this man, when he is incarnated, when, when the Spirit of God becomes incarnate in him, we are going to crown him King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And he'll be Father, Son, Holy Ghost, King of uh, the Son of David, the Son of Man, the Son of God. Lady of the Valley, the Rose of Sharon, the All Together Lovely, Wonderful, <coughs> Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father, and so on, right down the line. <coughs> There'll be no end of his rule. Amen. And remember, in the future home of the earthly bride, Brother Brandon categorically said that Lamb will be on the throne and the pillar of fire will but he quickly says, but there'll be one. Now, come on. I see Lamb. I see pillar of fire. I see William Brown. Just pretend that's the Lamb. It's not, of course. Let's pretend. He sure is like the Lamb. All right? Where does he put you? <clears throat> Brother Brown said the body is so much a part of God, it is a son. God was in Christ. God was in him. That made the difference. He said he's in that, but he's gone. Well, get your, get, let's get our options straight, brother, sister. We'll make up your mind. What is he? <clears throat> what is he? That which is born, God cannot be born. But God can cause a birth with the life of God in that sperm, in that egg. And it picks up the chemistry, the chemicals. It isn't the chemicals that count, it's the life that counts that takes the, the chemicals. Because I can take all the chemicals, and I can take a little pumpkin seed, and I can take a watermelon seed, and I can take a turnip seed, and a radish seed, and a human seed, and a cow seed, and a horse seed, and a dog seed, and they'll take the same chemicals, they'll all be different. It's the life that's in the seed. Amen. If anybody tries to tell you Jesus was Adam, he's crazy. Oh, to agree exactly right, but exactly wrong. You've got to watch it. God put a special life in that. <clears throat> but he breathed in, in the breath of life. That makes the Holy Ghost. But there's a special life in life. There's a spirit. The Hindus tell you trees have spirits. I wouldn't be surprised. You take a scissor and snip the leaf and the tree shudders. I wouldn't be surprised. The Korean photographs of Ru Russia... <clears throat> show trees for leaves dying. They show the aura. What is it? There's a life there. But this life with all those genes and all those attributes, God compounded and put right down into sperm and egg and put it in a woman's body so it would have a chemistry from mankind. And the life was in there. In other words, it draws some. Mary supplied the sustaining forces so he'd come forth as a man. But it was a God man. And it tells you, unto us a child is born. Yeah. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulders, and his name shall be called Wonderful, the Prince of Peace, the Everlasting Father. It tells you what it is. It shows you God in his offices is taking this one, and then people say, where's the body? I'll tell you where the body is. It's on the throne. Brother Branham said he ripped the seals off the book and climbed on his father's throne. And Jesus himself said in, in, in the <clears throat> the third chapter of the book of Revelation, the 21st, he said, They that overcome can sit with me in my throne as I've overcome and am set down with my Father in his throne. And he said it only in the last church age, not the previous ages. <clears throat> he was of the Melchizedek order, but he fulfilled the Aaronic order because Melchizedek doesn't present blood. He presents emblems of the blood. The shedder forth of the light that came out of the blood. The Aaronic priesthood presented the blood. Abraham met with Melchizedek after the heat of the battle. <clears throat> and he served communion. <clears throat> Who was he? Elohim in the form of a man, the structure of a man. The brother man said, take a piece of dirt and just throw it. That dirt meant nothing. But when the dirt brought forth, as it were, that son of God, that means everything, brother and sister. Yeah. And you don't disregard that body. You don't put it to one side. You don't, you, 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 Listen, you recognize, you know what you're dealing with. <clears throat> I told you for years and years, I said, thank God for the son. Oh, God, I thank you that you came and you, you brought yourself down to a form of a man. <clears throat> you, you lived in that mask. <clears throat> I was grateful. I said, because as God, you would hardly know what it's all about when it comes to me. But I can trust that man. And I was so tickled with the man that I put the God aside. And now for years, I've looked at the father. 
I looked at the Holy Spirit Elohim, <clears throat> the beginning of all beginnings. Now we got them together. And I'm very happy now. Well, I'm not happy as though I knew a lot of things because I know very little of anything. But each is forming. <clears throat> it's crystallizing with understanding. So, all right. Now, we're looking at this thought here, which I deviated from, <clears throat> of the, the personal visitation of God in the pillar of fire <clears throat> brought Paul to the place of revelation where that he was more steadfast with his revelation than those that had been with Jesus in the physical, and I took a little time off for the physical. <clears throat> now we're getting back to that understanding. We're dealing once more, not with the physical, but what the physical allowed God to attain for us. See? <clears throat> so we're looking at back to the pillar of fire again, which we kind of leave there. Now, this brings us then to the thought I said about Paul with his great revelation being greater than anybody's revelation, which is certainly true. Greater than John's, greater than Peter's, greater than any of them. And more steadfast. Because Peter fumbled. Yet he sure did. James was carried away. And we don't know but what John was. But at least we haven't heard from John. And we should, I think. In all due fairness. He should have been there helping Paul. <clears throat> but nobody stood at Paul. Even Barnabas kicked his heels up. So Paul just out. Right. And people talk about love. Say, well, that wasn't nice, Paul. Are you kidding? Eternal destiny is in my hands by what I preach. The whole plan of God, as it was in Christ, is in my hands. And you tell me love is to bow down to this truck and nonsense, this perversion from hell? Folks, if you've got the kind of love that this goes with this nonsense I've been preaching it for years, look, you still haven't heard me. You still you don't know what last Sunday's message is all about? <clears throat> I'm not trying to get anybody hard. But you're not a soldier of the cross unless you're a soldier of the word. Amen. You're not a lover of Christ unless you're a lover of the word because he is the word. This is printed page, but listen, I'm going to tell you something. <clears throat> this, you might say, is the encyclopedic formula of the great formula for the great spirit of God. Unless you're thoroughly versed as a chemist, you can't get into the encyclopedia. Because <clears throat> the symbols mean nothing to you. And they can't eat. They're not in plain language. You think I can understand this plain language so-called that these druggists use? Forget it. <clears throat> All right, now listen. If the personal revelation of God in a pillar of fire did this to Paul, what about Revelation 10? One, rather, Revelation 10 and 7, William Brown. Now, oh, come on. <clears throat> Last Sunday I told you you weren't getting what I was saying. Now, I don't feel bad about that because oftentimes I say those things and I'm not getting it too well myself. And then I sit down and think about it and then I do get it. <coughs> but I knew something was going on which we weren't getting. <coughs> and we'll get into it before, maybe not this meeting today, but maybe Wednesday night we'll touch it. Because I might get that far in my notes, I don't know. But I want to just bring this to your attention. The man whose sermon I'm reading to you, we're discussing. If he actually had the same pillar of fire which he says he did. For he said, how wonderful, just think, the same pillar of fire that brought the word to Paul is here revealing it. <clears throat> then he would naturally have the same steadfastness and a depth of revelation even greater in its moment because it concerns the closing off than perhaps any man in history I can't compare him to Moses as though I know that he's greater than Moses. I would never dare to say that because Moses' name is in the book of Revelation. But William Branham was there too. Though not by name. And people get 
get fussed up about that name. Why should they? Isaiah never told the name of John, neither did Zechariah. <clears throat> An angel came and told him. So where does that leave them? When they can explain to me how John the Baptist got the Holy Ghost in his mother's womb without even repenting, then I'll start listening to these dodos. If you're not smart enough to know sovereignty of God from that, you better tell me what sovereignty is. Sure, that's the truth. <clears throat> All right, now we go back to page 54, the second paragraph. Get the revelation, brother, he's saying. Get this revelation. The revelation is Christ the mystery God revealed. Get this great revelation that everything that God was, he poured into Christ, that everything God wanted to manifest in you is wound up in him, and if you can then get him as your private instructor, because he was a spirit manifest in flesh, God manifests in flesh, then you will get this revelation. <clears throat> You will know what the plan of God is all about and where you fit in. And when the bride in this hour knows where she fits in in the schematic program of Almighty God, the Brother Branham said she's going to go off in a rapture. Now get the revelation. Of course, Brother Branham took the revelation reading from, uh, what do you call it? <coughs> Colossians. He read in the first chapter, verse 15, who is the image of the invisible God? Well, let's read the other part. It says, giving thanks unto the Father which has made us part to meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who have delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. These things up here could only come through the Son dying upon the cross and shedding his blood. Now what about this Son? Who is the image of the invisible God? How could Paul say anything different from Hebrews 1? <coughs> image. <coughs> You look in the mirror, you see an image. You look at Jesus, you see God. Because that's how God ordained it. Now you can't see the spirit part. Jesus himself said, no man has seen God at any time. The Bible said, no man can see God in the man. So there's got to be something come between. <clears throat> he put Moses right in a rock. You talk about x-ray. I think Moses literally saw him through the rock. It was the back part of a man, signifying how God's revelation would come through a man. All right. For by him were all things created, that are in heaven, things in earth, visible and invisible, where they be thrones, the means, principalities, powers, are all things created by him and for him. <clears throat> he is before all things, and by him all things consist, are maintained. And he is the head of the body of the church. That's what he said over there in, in, in uh, Corinthians. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. Now watch that. Notice he's the firstborn from the dead, and he's begotten from the dead. The Bible speaks of begotten and firstborn also. Issuing forth, the first one, came forth in immortality, out of the dead. Also begotten. <clears throat> How is it begotten? Because that was the initiation into an immortal race. Now, if, if, if a man like uh, a, a Enoch is immortal, I'm going to tell you one thing. It was looking forward to the cross, <clears throat> the death and resurrection. Like we look back. So you see the centrality of that one that came and died upon Calvary. That in all things he might have the preeminence. In other words, God did it this way that he would get preeminence and he couldn't do it any other way and get the preeminence. <clears throat> so how, how's God been doing things? By a mass, by a role in a drama, by a manifestation, revelation. See? Bringing a preeminence. And what's going to come of it? We are going to be the benefactors. God did not lose us simply in order to find us. That would make God a horrible creature. God does not make people sick or allow them to be sick <clears throat> just in order to be a healer. As though we're just in order for some whim or something. <clears throat> it's in the divine sovereign plan of God. And because man precipitates participates, and, uh, and God allows the positive and the negative so that he can, who started with the positive, allows it to go to a negative to bring it back to the positive in a full manifestation which we could not have otherwise. He gives us everything with the Son. Amen. Because yeah. God's in the debt of nobody. The Bible said God is the debtor to nobody. Then if he was using us in his plan, in order, as Arabia said, which is true, God being a savior, 
It was necessary to predestinate a sinner in order to give God reason and purpose of being. <clears throat> Not just a whim. But in order for God to display himself in his beneficence and his love, he had to do it this way. This is a hard thing to understand. Nobody understands except the elect. <clears throat> Nobody William Brown ever brought the truth to us to understand it. Pink got along with it. He couldn't do it. <clears throat> they can't do it. They can't see it. Then God forced everything into us. Yeah. See? <clears throat> what little price was paid. It was only put forth in Romans. If we suffered him, we'll be glorified with him. You're going to be glorified anyway, but the suffering. <clears throat> that allowing that negative, that negative part, so that God can bring forth the positive in the only way he could bring it forth to do him justice and ourselves justice. There is nothing that he spares on that bride. And nothing here he'll, he'll, he'll spare on the, the foolish virgin to come at it. <clears throat> there is nothing. Now he's going to get a preeminence out of this. Now get the revelation, brother. This generation is spurning God's revelation. That's true. They're spurning it. <clears throat> now what is this gen what is this revelation? The revelation, you talk about spurning it. Listen. Unto the angel, the messenger, which is in the church, which is in Laodicea, right. These things set the amen. That's a finished rubber. The faithful and true witness. <clears throat> He's going to prove that all down the line it was Jesus. As Brother Branham said, it's been Christ all along under the seals. The beginning of the creation of God. God forming himself into human flesh. And that's what it means. The prophet said so. I know thy works. Thou art neither cold nor hot. I would you were cold or hot. This is the hottest generation they ever had. TV, radio, programs, everything. People raising money <clears throat> for the communists. Look at the Miss Africa's in from stem to stern. Read Reader's Digest this week. It came out this week. But the French doctor said what's happened to our money, the country singers and everybody else. How it went into the hands of the communists to destroy the people who were trying to help. Smarten up America. If I had a voice, I'd say, smarten up. Your days are not numbered anymore. They're finished. Amen. You played the fool. Amen. Now you're going to reap the results. Amen. Bankrupting yourself for folly. Charity begins at home. Yeah. We never brought upon the nations out there what they brought upon themselves. We're bringing on ourselves now, though, brother, sister, and you know, the image of the beast. Right. And I'll tell you, I'd sooner be a sackcloth native somewhere in Africa or out there in the jungle somewhere, of <clears throat> God knows, gone or South America, any place else. And we put a marriage done every time. And we put far worse, don't worry. This is no, no beautiful spot to be anymore, though I'd say it's the best place right now for you because we love our luxury. Lukewarm. <clears throat> they think they're red hot. He said, I wish you were cold or hot, he said. And I could deal with you as a bunch of sinners. And red hot, I could deal with you like a bunch of brat. But he said, you're the lukewarm stuff in the middle. You know, if you want to make a bomb, person vomit, you give them lukewarm water. Nothing like lukewarm water to make you throw up. Because thou sayest, he said, because you're lukewarm and neither cold hot, I'll spew you out of the mouth. <clears throat> because thou sayest, I'm rich and increased with goods. And have need of nothing. And knowest not, you're wretched, miserable, poor, blind, and naked. I counsel you to buy of me gold tried in the fire. They don't have it. They should buy it. You do make me rich. White raiment, they haven't got it. They say that they do. The shame of their nakedness has appeared. They've been caught in their adulteries, their lovers. And Brother Umgren so beautifully said that I know this is a lover. <clears throat> a false doctrine and dogmas. Anoint thine eye with the eye salve. That sounds as though they've got the eye salve. They don't. That you may be able to see. Now notice, it. Here's, the, here's, what, here's, the, here's the antidote. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous and repent. Repentance is a change of mind. Oh, I know people don't believe it's a change of mind. They think repentance is, is godly sorrow. That's hogwash. Godly sorrow works repentance. Yeah. Trees work houses, but you got to have the trees. Brick work houses, but you got to have the brick. And you can't repent unless you're sorry. And nobody's going to be sorry when he thinks he's got it all. He's crazy. Spiritually insane. But he said, we got it all. He's lukewarm. He makes God vomit. He 
His son read a hut. <clears throat> Why, he said, I'm cold. Millions now living won't die. Greatest move in the world. We got the Bible into Rome. <clears throat> we got them talking in tongues. Hallelujah, we own the world. Pentecost does own the world. She's gone Catholic, right back to old Mama Hoor. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you something. She taught the old Hoor a few tricks. I told you for years that I would sooner trust the old Hoor than the young harlots. Because Mama knows her old tricks, but the young harlots learned all the tricks of Mama and a bunch of their own. Yeah. Now they got Mama tricked. And mama tricked them. So now they're dancing, ringing around her rosy. They're both tricked. They're fools in their folly. And they're happy. Oh, they're happy. Yeah. You, listen, I'm going to tell you something. If, if we don't get out of here soon, I, I just wonder. If this isn't the end generation, I don't know what it's all about. <coughs> the clock has stopped. Goody. <coughs> We're taking our time this morning. Many as I love, I chase it. What's he chasing? It starts in the mind. Hey, what's going on here? That man is a prophet. That is the pillar of fire. That has been vindicated. He is here as God. We, we, we'll never get that far this morning, but I'm going to tell you that man is literally God to the people, and he's literally God, period. Amen. When God's in him. That's right. And you're seeing God, even though you don't want to admit it. And I'm not a, and I, I am not a cult deity believer. Because William Branham is not God. He's a sinner saved by grace. <clears throat> but God has a way of doing things. And William Branham did not die for me. And he's dead, dead, dead in his body in the ground. That's not God. And that's not Jesus, the Son of God. But when he comes God to the people, it's just more than a phrase. <clears throat> and you'll find out that that was just absolutely God on Judgment Day as far as God is concerned. And when I get as far as God is concerned, I'm happy because I got it made. You think I'm kidding? I don't kid about anything, brother. If I don't have scripture, I'm not saying nothing up here to my knowledge. Unless I've been fooled by the devil. Jesus said in Matthew 23, verse 34, Behold, I send you prophets and wise men and scribes. And some you'll kill and crucify, some you'll discourage in your synagogue, persecute city to city. That upon you may come of the righteous blood, to, uh, shed all the righteous blood shed upon the earth from the blood of righteous Abel, the blood of Zacharias, son of Berechiah. That's to the Jews. Verily I say unto you, all these things come of the generation. O Jerusalem, Jerusalem, thou that killest the prophets and stonest them which are sent unto thee, how often would I have gathered your children together? He, God in the prophets. <coughs> gathering the children. Amen. And how does he gather them today? Come on, come on. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter. How does he gather today? Amen. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him. How does he gather them? By a prophet. Amen. The message, the word of the hour. That's what Brother Branham told us. He never was wrong. He never going to be wrong. <clears throat> God to the people. <clears throat> Not just God to the people, as though God just choked. God came down Amen. there, and He said, "I feel the pillar of fire standing up inside it." Oh, sacrilegious! Sacrilegious! My foot! Anything else is sacrilegious, because that's how God did it. <clears throat> sure, that's more than just Charlie McCarthy and Edgar Bergen. Pardon the expression, but that was our generation. I wonder if that preface something. God, this generation is burning God's revelation. What is the revelation of this hour? The revelation of this hour is God interpreting his own word by manifestation. The word that was ordained for to this age <clears throat> through a prophet. And the prophet in turn explains it to the people. That's exactly how it works. What is the message of this hour? Malachi 4. Revelation 10, 1 to 7, Luke 17, 30, John 14, 12, John 15, 24, Hebrews 6, Hebrews 12, Matthew 12. Now, I'd like to have five time. I just have a little Sunday school. I just ask each one of you, especially you men here, you tell me what I said. I, want, I would like you to quote me from Malachi 4. What am I quoting? What am I quoting when I quote Revelation 10, 1 to 7? You can, we can almost do it word by word. 
<clears throat> we don't need to. We just tell what's in it. Can you tell me Luke 17, 30? You certainly can. John 14 and 12, absolutely. <clears throat> what about John 15, 24? <clears throat> Used it hundreds of times. What's Hebrews 6 got to do with Matthew, Hebrews 12. What's Matthew 12 got to do with it? Hey, want to look at Matthew 12? That's a favorite of mine. <clears throat> Tells you that he said, verse 17, that it might be fulfilled spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, Behold my servant, whom I have chosen, my beloved, in whom my soul is well pleased. I'll put my spirit upon him, and he will show judgment to the Gentiles. <clears throat> he didn't do that to the, to, the, to, the, to the Jews. He didn't vindicate the Gentiles. Not at that time, he vindicates the Gentiles now. Not back there. Yeah. And he didn't vindicate the Jews. He condemned them. Yeah. See, all right, let's keep reading. <clears throat> now he shall not strive nor cry, neither any man hear his voice in the streets. Now you know he did all of those back there in the flesh. This is to the Gentile. You can't see his spirit. You don't hear his spirit. Brother Brandon said, I wasn't the one that said I was just the voice. So anything happening down at this hour, <clears throat> it can't be the man himself. It's got to be somebody else. So when the Lord descends with the shout, the Greek does not say it's the voice of the one descending. It's so it's somebody else's voice. Then pray tell whose voice is it. Oh, Holy Father Pope, Holy Father Hogwash. Amen. Holy Father Hogwash elders and presidents and theologians. You better show me you got the voice. Because good, my soul depends on it. You know, you get a little bit of money, you can invest it in stock. If the stock goes for broke, well, you can save a little more money in it. Invest a little more stock, but what if your soul's gone? You don't keep reinvesting your soul, buddy. <clears throat> it's either locked up or it's gone shot. You don't get a second chance. Somebody's messed up on this. A bruised reed shall he not break. <clears throat> the law was until John. Grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. <clears throat> you want to know about the bruised reed? Let's go back to Matthew 23. It should be back there where I was reading. <clears throat> oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Thou that killest the prophets and stonest them that are sent to you, how often I gathered thy children together, even as a hen gathers her chickens under each and you would not. Behold, your house is left unto you desolate. You're gone. You're finished. Broken. Breed. Smoking. Flax. Pipe. Yeah. He doesn't do that to the Gentiles. He brings restoration. Amen. Hey, are we past turning over? Oh. Hey, we got a lot of time today. We're doing great. <coughs> Yeah. Bruce Reedy shall not break, smoking flax, he shall not quench. That's my thing for a change, you notice. So he sent forth judgment unto victory. And in his name shall the Gentiles trust. They see what the name produces. Because when a prophet comes in the name, and it works according to the word, and it comes to pass, you listen to him. Amen. Amen. Name. Not flesh. Name stands. Brother Brown could say, like, who are you? I'm Jesus. The boy said, are you persecuting me? <clears throat> right? Notice how God allied himself to his own. You touch them, you touch me. Amen. He said, you hurt them, you hurt me. Amen. True bride always gets hurt when somebody gets hurt. We don't know too much about love yet. That life in the Word has got to be released. That attribute of life in the Word, which we call love, has to be released in the human soul to come through the Spirit into the human manifestation, a real love, or it isn't there. Turn it over. the revelation this hour that God has visited the Gentiles to take out of them a people that already have his name. From the first one that died to the last one that doesn't die. The 
comes in and gets charity. I can just shout. I don't know why. If it doesn't sound good to me, only. I mean, if it just, all it does is sound good, I still love it. But somebody's going to have it. Maybe the person we think doesn't deserve it. Although we all know we don't deserve it. See, false prophets are doing that. They're causing the spurning. Men anointed unto gifts, but not the word. Men who speak in tongues and prophesy and take the message to Rome. The dead Pentecostal message. And everybody loves Pentecost now. they become one of the boys. <clears throat> the Lutherans weren't one of the boys for a long time. So they organized and went to pot with the Catholics. And the Methodists weren't one of the boys. Oh, not by a jugful. <clears throat> they had it just as bad as the Lutherans. <clears throat> the Lutherans gave them a great time. The Catholics gave them a great time. And the Pentecostals came on the scene and they got the worst of the worst. I just dropped one little phrase in there. What are we looking for? Simply excoriation? Who knows? I don't know. I don't know. We just missed the tribulation that much, I do know. I don't know that God wants us too concerned because then you start walking in fear. You start becoming a legalist. Fear God. He said, fear not him that destroys body. That's right. But fear whom it destroys both body and soul. Amen. Don't fear the one that can destroy the body, but not the soul, he warns us. And then he says, see those sparrows out there? He said, look, he said, I'm taking care of them. How much more will I take care of you? Solomon is not arrayed in all his glory like one of those lilies out there. And that's true. Solomon, like he had a hook nose and maybe beady eyes. I'm bad for maybe not maybe pretty like his mother. I don't think his dad was too much. Brilliant, very fine man and great personality, tremendous, tremendous, tremendous person. And what enhanced him, of course, was God. Solomon was not that fortunate. So when he said, Solomon, all his glory. You ever see, look at the lady, how beautiful the roses. I got hundreds of pictures I took. I had the camera shutter bug for a while on my flowers, and the flowers got <laughs> and I saw, fool you on the roses. They're starting to look a little bit better now. All the, nobody could look like a rose, even my roses that are slightly decrepit. Slightly? Maybe quite so. Couldn't look like a pretty little daisy out there. And that daisy not as pretty as another daisy. <clears throat> no, and the rose of Sharon. The single leaf not as beautiful as the double, and the double not as nice as my some neighbors or somebody I've seen it here. They got quadrupled, I think. They're just like little puffball. And the Delphiniums? I'm telling you, who could look like that? And yet God cares more than for that. He put that into an inanimate, that's a wrong term, in uncommunicative, insensitive animation where you and I have a sensitive communication with God by revelation of the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> they're spurning it. False prophets are doing that. By their fruits you know them. Now what is a false prophet? A false prophet is a man that can show a sign. Now not Deuteronomy 18. He can show a sign and a wonder and he gets off the word. Now how are you going to get off the word? First of all, there has to be somebody on the word. Because as I said a while ago, if the prophet that got the word did not know what he's saying, how in the world, 400 years down the road, could they know what he didn't know? Forget it. Yeah. How many knows what a button hook is? Come on, let's have some fun. Who, who knows what a button hook is? You do? We, oh, now, John, you're not kidding. You know what a button hook is? In your age, you try to be kidding. This guy knows what a button hook is. A button hook is a little hook. You run through the eyelet of a shoe and you pull the button through. Listen, <clears throat> 50 years ago, a school teacher said to a little, my friend, a school teacher, Jay, uh, I'm forgetting him, one of my best friends back in the days. He's a sweet boy, <clears throat> wonderful kid. Teaching school, and he said, Tell me, what is a button hook? And he says, Great chance. What is it, honey? It's what you hang buttons on. <laughs> 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 so I thought maybe Don would come up with that. 
<laughs> but he knows where the button hook is. Well, he must have read it somewhere, because I don't think he saw a high heel shoe in his day, really. You know, <clears throat> when I was a kid, my mother wore button, button shoes. And when we were kids, we had shoes like uh, galoshes, like you have now. It didn't have that, that zipper or, this, or the, 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 the uh, metal clasp on it. <clears throat> we had buttons. And we needed, where's button? Where's button hook? Because you couldn't get those miserable little stinkers through that, those eyes. Then you shoot, pull them through, and flap more. You know, <coughs> I, if I was an artist, I'd draw you a picture. But I'm telling you, if those prophets didn't know what they were saying, <coughs> and I'm, as, as I say, if the kid 50 years ago didn't know what a button hook is, because we, you know, he, now of course he, he would be, what, five years old, and I was about 22 something when, they, when Jay told me how that was. <coughs> so how in the world, if the prophet at that time didn't know, how would a man 400 years later know? Right. Couldn't do it. Right. <coughs> no way. So what would it take? It would take some divinely indicated authority to bring you word. Now, I know we go over and over this, but let me tell you something. I have one purpose in mind. And that's to get you so inured with this, so thoroughly familiar, so positively a part of you that you can't think any other way. You're here to be brainwashed, or why are you here? Amen. Amen. Not by Lee Veil, but by the Word of God. Amen. Who cares about me? What if you got a vibrating wash? Oh, brother, sister, inability to do anything except fry an egg, and I don't even trust myself there. <clears throat> now he said they're hybridized. How are they hybridized? Now, the hybrid is when you bring two species together that can mix. But they're literally unproductive in themselves. The end result is that thing. So where do you go from there? You're dead. You're pruned off. You're shot. You all follow me? Amen. They're hybridized. <clears throat> now, they're bred into an organization instead of the Word of God. It's Christianity going to creeds and dogmas. You say, well, that's their, their credo output that's hybridized. No, you're hybridized because hybridized because that's what you're eating. That's where you're getting your life. Sure, because you get your life from there. <clears throat> the Bible said, how great is that darkness when your light you find is dark. <clears throat> your light turns to darkness. <clears throat> what happened to the Catholic Church? Died. Luther, died. Weston, died. Pentecost, dead. And this group here, too, <clears throat> the part that doesn't stick with the word, are dead, dead, dead. They're twice dead. Amen. Plucked up by the roots. Amen. And they'll see a judgment they wish they'd never seen. <clears throat> True. They read an organization of the instead of the Word of God. The revelation of God revealing Himself through Christ who is the Word. Notice He all puts in there who is the Word. And when you get to the Word, you must realize He's speaking in two faces. This is the printed form, and the other is the manifested form. There is a manifested form. <clears throat> this is a printed form. Then when this, through that, brings this to you, you get it. Now people don't have to believe it. Prove it. Nobody has to believe anything. You don't have to believe anything here. <clears throat> I can prove it. Can I beg you for money? No, I don't beg you for money. Do you at your table? No. More beauty to my table than their table. I give as good as I get or better. I'm not talking about food now. Anyway, shape and form. Nobody's obligated to me. A lot of preachers think people are obligated. Hogwash. Where do you get that nonsense? <clears throat> one to one confrontation. See? <coughs> Word. He said here, the revelation of God revealing himself through Christ. Who is the Word? <coughs> True. <coughs> who is? The one who spoke this through the prophets, bringing this to pass and proving that he is here doing it. Now, you tell me you can get that on your own? Ha! It takes a prophet. But if you let your thinking go, the prophet's thoughts can become your thoughts, and God's thoughts are your thoughts. <clears throat> and you're safe. Because then you know what God's thinking. 
Brother Brandon talks about that. We're never going to get to it, so it doesn't matter. We just take a look. One paragraph. We did two paragraphs last time, so we're doing pretty good. We got one third of it. <laughs> what? One, two, three, four, five lines. <clears throat> okay, notice. That predestinated seed. That's Christ. The Holy Ghost alone shows you who he is. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> God is not seed, but God has seed. Ha! Ah, I am seed and I have seed. <clears throat> Big difference. Now he said that this one was a predestinated seed, so therefore this was a production of God. And a seed means the very life of the individual, the individual himself miniaturized. <clears throat> so through whatever lies in there, <clears throat> what we call the the genetic and nucleic pattern system schemes everything God placed in there because that lay in his life and he put it in a human body and limited that human body to do what he wanted done by the human body because the human body never went around creating and doing a lot of things. If you would say, well, if that's God, he better manifest it <clears throat> the way we want it. So this was a seed. And he's called the royal seed. We also are called royal seed. Okay. The Holy Ghost alone shows you who that seed is. <clears throat> now he's talking to the human now. Who he is. No prophet or kings can do it. Why not? Why not a prophet? All people do not believe in prophets, and those that do believe in prophets do not necessarily believe that the prophet that God sent is God's prophet. Amen. So no prophet can show you anything. <clears throat> he can come by and manifest and demonstrate and say, hey, raise your voice like I can. You know, Brother Brandon's good at that too, indicating, uh, you know what, strength by raising the voice. Well, you just get sore throat. Might as well just talk very low. I brought up wrong. So was poor old brother Bill. We were both brought up wrong. Out there in the country, you only get country folks. <clears throat> you know. You know how it is. Still small voices. Still small voice only can teach you what the elevated, strong voices of prophets and teachers try to get across to you. <laughs> and if you don't have the still small voice inside of you, you you're going to walk off, you know, deafened by your own voice, bombarding your own inner ears rather than the voice of God by him. I'm going to tell you something. Whenever, whenever he stimulates the auditory nerve, though, at times, it is pretty loud. <clears throat> the still small voice is cardiophono, like Newton said, the voice of the heart. I think I got that right. I don't know. No prophets can do it. No king can do it. That means governmental force can do it. The Roman church under Augustine said, God struck Paul down in his ravings, <clears throat> ranting and trying to destroy the church. Should we not then also do the same thing to turn them to God? If God used force to turn the man, then we'll use force. No, it won't work. It won't work. Amen. That's why the Catholic church or the Protestants are going to take everything and everybody over. <clears throat> they can't get away from that force system. They hate it. Now, the little Protestants, on the, they've been dabbling on the edge of just holding things down, holding things down. They're in the Bible that says they are those that hold down the truth in unrighteousness. You're stinking Protestants. Protestants protest. What are they protesting? They protest God and love the devil. Amen. You wait. You wait till we get to the place where I said last Sunday you didn't get it. <clears throat> I'll show you something. I'll show you where everybody's condemned simply by the word of God. Not what Lee Vale says. Forget what Lee Vale says. We take you the word on it. <clears throat> See, no king could do it. And here God is manifested in flesh. That's back 2,000 years ago. Here is the fullness. He is completely revealed and made known to the world. That's exactly right. You say to the world, yes, through the ordained channels to the whole world, isolated in one place but moving out. As Paul said, this was not done in a corner. William Branham moved around the world. 
The Africans seen alone should have convinced the whole world of the dynamism of God on the scene today. And they turned him down flat. <clears throat> Why they said this man doesn't baptize like we baptize. You talk about a bunch of Pharisees. You know what Brother Brown screamed out indictment? You are your father the devil. And he's worked you. Now, I'm going to prove it to you. Not this morning. I haven't got time. But keep in mind, I'm going to get to it. And I'm going to show you in utmost simplicity <clears throat> where the church is at. I know what I'm talking about. Don't think I don't. Look on Mount Transfiguration. Hear the testimony of God himself. This is my beloved son. Hear you him. There stood Moses representing the law. There stood Elijah representing the prophet. But they passed away. They sure did. Jesus wept alone and the voice said, This is my beloved son. Hear him. <clears throat> there were three represented there, the law, the prophets, and Christ. Why did these men pass away? Why did they pass away? Because Christ fulfilled all the law and the prophets. Why do you need them then? <clears throat> and he said, This is he, God fully manifested. Not manifested in the prophets. That's fully, see. Now notice he said fully manifested. He said, not God fully. Then he, I put the word manifested because that's what he's talking about. <clears throat> For God fully there. <clears throat> God fully up front. How do you put it on display? Call it what you want. God fully. Yeah. Name your own little thought. No prophet was that. <clears throat> no way. <clears throat> not manifested pro manifested prophets. Not manifested in law. But manifested in Christ. <clears throat> okay, look at it. Second Corinthians. Well, we all read this many times. Fifth chapter. And it says in 18 and 19, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled unto us, us to himself by Jesus Christ. So that tells you somebody in between. And hath given unto us the ministry of reconciliation. Now we're in between. To wit, what is it all about? That God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespass unto them. Hath given unto us the word of reconciliation. What word have we got? Restoration. There's your evangelist, why he's all cooped up and phony. <clears throat> People say, <clears throat> where's the evangelist? Oh, they can't take this simple word about a simple prophet and a simple God. And a simple demonstration. Well, they're all teachers now. Why do preachers have preachers around this neighborhood have men come in the pulpits that deny the prophet? <clears throat> Soon in Dayton down here, you're going to have a man who says, Brother Branham was wrong. That which is perfect hasn't come. And you're going to flock to him. Not you, folks. Go ahead if you want it. <clears throat> you fall for that stuff, I'll have less care of you. You know, the more kids feed under your table, the harder they feed. Papa's got to sweat more. <clears throat> Mom's got to do more dishes. <clears throat> I'm not trying to get rid of him. Just tell me. If you're not happy, not satisfied. I don't think, I don't think you're unhappy and dissatisfied here. I'm just letting people know what, how we stand here. I'm trying to hang a ring around a rosy crowd. Mm -hmm. Go on now. <clears throat> when a man says a prophet's wrong, what has he got to tell you? Amen. Well, they'll run down. <clears throat> well, the guy came by and said, it's all elders. I know he came from Ladder Rain. I'm a Canadian. I know where that stuff came from. What are you trying to tell <clears throat> a bunch of falling for this stuff. Well, should we mean it this way? I don't care how you mean it. <laughs> don't bother me how you mean anything. I'm my own man. <clears throat> no, I hope I'm the Christ man. I hope I'm your man. I don't know. But I mean my thinking. I depend on the prophet. Hey, man. The way I see it, I can't help what other people say. Let's go to Second Timothy. <clears throat> Second Timothy one? I think it's really first Timothy one. Yeah, first Timothy three sixteen. And without controversy is the great as the mystery of God is. God was manifested in the flesh, justified in the spirit, seen of angels, <clears throat> preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, received in the world. I don't know what that all means, but I can know the first part of God is manifested in the flesh. I can take that. I don't know if anybody ever explained what it means to be justified in the spirit. Maybe it simply means that God raised him from the dead. <clears throat> the Spirit of God raised him. That proved it. He walked on the earth and showed himself. That did it. I suppose that's it. 
And the baptism came along to prove that the blood was efficacious. Perhaps that's what it said. That's an age, well, that's a, a thought. I'm not saying that, right? <clears throat> I don't know. See? Okay. Christ has mercy. The law put you in jail, but you but it couldn't get you up. The prophets are God's justice to condemn you and kill you for it. That's right. I said, the prophets are God's justice to condemn you and kill you for it. Well, we better find out about that one. Because we know judges pass sentence. <clears throat> but judges don't kill you. They pass the sentence of death that does kill you. Somebody else kills you. Now, of course, God can kill and make a lamb and do what he wants. But usually a judge just does a certain thing. So let's go to John 5 and read what John says, what Jesus said about the judge. Because this is what he hey, we're dealing with. We're, we're dealing with God, period. And he was manifest in the flesh. <clears throat> so we're looking at this one, God manifest in flesh. Beginning at verse 22, For the Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. And what does that mean? The Father judges no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. Well, that tells you very flat right there that for whomever Christ intervenes, that one is free. There's no judgment there. It's just simple that. What do you got to judge? Hey, look, that is a wooden cross. You don't have to judge that. That is an organ. You don't have to judge that. That is a speaker. You don't have to judge that. This is a microphone. You don't have to judge that. That's a fact. We're dealing with facts. That's all. No big rig and roll here. <clears throat> don't place this down the road a million miles from now. That all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son honors not the Father. That's a fact. <clears throat> but you're sinning. That took care of it. Very there's any he that hears my word and keeps in him that sent me at the everlasting life. And shall not come into condemnation. Now what does he say? He that hears my word and believes on him that sent me with the word that I'm telling you. He said, if you think this is my own word, he said, you're wrong. Yeah, I've been sentenced. I don't have my own word. Haven't I proved it to you? <coughs> Didn't I do the works to show you? If I had not done the works that no other man did, they'd not sin, but now they both hated both, both sin and hated both me and my father. <clears throat> if you don't believe me, he said the words that I say, then believe the works. You said once you admit then the works are supernatural, then can you believe God would entrust me with supernatural works and not a supernatural word? What kind of prophet do you believe in? As he tells the people here. Where is where, the Christians today? <clears throat> Where's the Christian today? Not going to call the nation the lake. Now you see, what, what's that got to do? The judge. You don't tell the judge anything he tells you. The judge doesn't have to condemn you. The word's already done it. What's the law say? <clears throat> see? In other words, I'm telling you, the thing is automatic. <clears throat> Very good, send to you. The hour is coming and now is when the ditch and hear the voice of the Son of God and the hear so live. For as the Father life in himself, he given, he given the Son to have life in himself, and he given him authority to execute judgment also because he is the Son of Man. Now he tells you right there concerning the judgment. <clears throat> now he said the prophets are the judges, and positively through them the execution of life or death is in their hands, their commission. <clears throat> That's right. Why? Because it is the Word of God. And remember, only God can kill and make a lab and so on. Okay. That's right. He said, it's God's justice to condemn you and kill you for it. The prophets are God's justice. Well, if God's a just God, what did Abraham say? Shall the, shall the judge of all the earth <coughs> destroy the righteous with the wicked? Why, he said, certainly not. When have they ever done anything like that? He said, I'll just go down and see who, who rejects those angels and who doesn't. And who took the angels in? Old Lot took them in. The rest turned them down, wanted to destroy them in a horrible death. Oh, listen, I'm going to tell you something, brother. Your thoughts can kill worse than knives and forks and clubs and pitchforks. So you think what the world's thinking out there? He thought about this man as soon as he died. They got the church age book on and said, why, the man is filthy. He, he, they ought to do away with a man like that. They wrote about he being seduced by the serpent as though the beast was a big four-footed devil. Foom, 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 foom. I said, you ever see a hairy snake? 
no four-footed beast. He was a man. Amen. To the extent he looked just like a man. <clears throat> Certainly. Handsome, more handsome than Adam ever thought of being. That's where the giants were. Great big guy could pick up and whirl it around. Whoopee. You think for one minute Brother Brandon mentioned sensation about a snake, the one with a snake around it? He wasn't referring back to the beast in the garden? Adam was secondhand alongside him, that bird. <clears throat> Come on, you, you think the prophet was an X-rated preacher? I tell you, I marvel at that fellow when I see what's happening right in this hour. I marvel that he called every card in the deck. He didn't miss a trick, as they say. In fact, there's a whole lot of tricks in there we aren't up to yet. You watch. There's no way he's going to get it on. And grandmother said, don't worry about what's coming down the road. That's not for us to think for tomorrow. It's to think for today. What comes today, never mind tomorrow, brother and sister. Tomorrow will take care of itself for the bad. The word of God says, sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. <clears throat> the trouble. Amen. All right, he said, it's there, it's just, God's justice to condemn you and kill you for it. That's right. But Jesus is God's love. In other words, all the, all the, judge, all the judges, which were the prophets, <clears throat> they came with the negative side, and Jesus came with the positive, fulfilling side. Not that there wasn't a positive in it. But they couldn't do what could get you out of the mess. They could pronounce a benediction, didn't mean a thing. They could pronounce a curse, and it didn't mean a thing. You bet. The point that a man wants to die, the judgment comes. But who could say the blessing? <clears throat> who could bring it? Oh, the hail could come in on the mighty monsoons and destroy crops like a fellow. Who was I talking to just the other day? Oh, yeah, I'm talking to my brother-in-law <coughs> in Canada, up in Alberta, right around Calgary. They got bumper crops. After the bumper crops, and rain is flattening the whole thing, going to lose the crops. But something doesn't happen. <coughs> All right? There's a nice crop. Bless it. Go on to get the wheat. Go on to get the bread. Here comes the big wheat. Go on down. Curse it. Now, everything is outside of your hands. You'd like it to be in your hands, have all blessing, blessing, blessing. Everybody wants a blessing, but only God can bring a blessing. And the blessing would start with turning away the curse. Because yours is cursed. And man is under a curse, but not cursed. God never said, Cursed be the man, or cursed be the woman, cursed be the snake, be the beast, cursed be the earth for the sake. The thraldom of sin covers man and nature, all under a curse, a blight, a death, a shroud. That's there. Only God can turn. Sure. Right. <clears throat> Jesus Christ, but Jesus Christ, but Jesus is God's love and revelation to let you know as a predestinated seed that he has called you. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> Jesus is God's love, but watch, he doesn't stop there. He says, and revelation. To let you know as a predestinated seed that he has called you. This is he, hear him. <clears throat> All right, now look, that sounds good. I like that. Everybody likes that. Church preaches God's love. And the revelation is love, 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 love. Lovely Lord, lovely Jesus. <clears throat> they forget the fact that Brother Van said, God's not a doughy old grandfather. You don't come to church to get entertained. You don't come to church to just have fellowship. You come to church to be corrected. <clears throat> because God is in the business now of correcting and bringing the antidote for what is in the world from the Garden of Eden. Amen. And he's got to get you back to the place in this condition right here on earth to where you can reach forth and be changed. Yep, right here. And all of nature starts moving with you. Right. And it's time. Right. <clears throat> so they talk about love. And that's all they want to hear. But let me tell you something. You better not talk about word because love goes out the window. Just like when you're first married, you learn after a long time, don't talk about in-laws because they're outlaws. My side is outlawed to my wife and her side's outlawed to me. Although I mean her side is pretty good. Mine's turned out fairly well too after seven, after 50 years. <laughs> well, I've known her for 50 solid years. <clears throat> but you know, that's the truth right there. Now, you talk about word, and 
that's where the fight all starts. Because that's where it started with Jesus. He said, for which work do you stone me? Oh, they said, no work at all. In fact, I like to pour the, <clears throat> you know, the molasses on the cherry pie on this one. Oh, listen, raise all the dead. In fact, great rabbi, I got some children down in the graveyard here. I'd love to have you raise them. And oh, said the general, listen, said the rabbi, <clears throat> I'm militant. And if you just keep breaking the loaves and fishes, we'll get those Romans. Why, well, he said, we can go up in the desert there with you breaking loaves and fishes and producing water and wine, well, we can beat the pants off those guys. No, Rabbi, look, you've got it made, but you, well, what's the trouble? You won't keep your mouth shut. That's what people still are in the grips of the same thing. Oh, great prophet. Oh, William Brandt, a man sent from God. Oh, William Brandt, nobody could do what you did. Write the books. Nobody in 2,000 years. That man was so godly, so wonderful. And why didn't he shut up? If he'd have just shut up, he wouldn't have had to weep. When the television screen showed 15 to 20,000 people to eat, he could have been human like you and, my, you and me. <clears throat> he could have joined the dirty dog class, the DD. The dumb dogs that won't bark. But he opened his mouth and he put his foot in. He Jesus only. Hmm. <clears throat> you know, the guy I told you in our town, he's Pentecostal. Well, we lived in Westminster, one side of town, he was the other. I can't remember his name right now. I'll remember later on. Trinitarian Assembly of God. His daughter had polio. Horribly crippled. They brought it to the meeting. He heard perfectly. But he couldn't leave it alone. Jesus owned it. <clears throat> Killed that bunch. The daughter went back where she was. <coughs> you know, folk, that's not half bad. What's down the road? <clears throat> Never mind now. I'll tell you what. You got your help. I'm getting mine back by the grace of God somehow. We'll get it back. We don't miss it. We'll get it the next life. We don't. But you know, you're sitting here. You ain't seen nothing yet. What you can see, because my generation is twice as tough as you guys sitting here. Your genes are gone. You've been living in smog, smog all your life. Pollutants, pesticides, insecticides, everything is not fit for you. You've been living in it. You're eating, you've eaten rotten, polluted eggs for years. I used to eat good beef. My wife and I. We had good food. Gene just thinks he's got good food, he raises it. He lives in a pest house, too. Look at him, he, he ain't so healthy. How are you, Gene? <laughs> well, Gene Winnegar's not as your age, that's much healthier. <laughs> and you shot. Amen. Not mention Brother Evans. <clears throat> sure. You haven't taken care of yourselves. There's no way you can do it. Brother Man says, it's all gone over the soil. <clears throat> How are you going to put it back in? A prophet of God says, it's out of the soil. When are you going to put it back in? Chemicals you manufactured? world's gone. Amen. <clears throat> Too bad. Well, they preach this love of God. That's what they're like. And the revelation is love, love, love at any price. Doesn't matter, but the Bible doesn't say that. See, that's why there's such a lack in the church today of real born-again people. <clears throat> because they're not preaching the love of God the way it is in the Word of God. Now listen, <clears throat> let's read this. My time is <clears throat> Oh, good. Maybe I can just fill this in. Hear him. Now the fullness of the Godhead is made known. <clears throat> See? God in his fullness. What the full God is, what he really is, positively, there he is in that man. <clears throat> Taken on the form of a man. The secret of the mystery is now revealed since God is manifested. God and man became one in order to do it. The anointed man, Christ. What does Christ mean? The anointed one. The anointed that was anointed with the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now remember that man himself in the flesh was not the fullness of God, period. Because that's a physical being. The fullness of God, head, period, is Holy Spirit, his spirit. And, every, and, and he is essentially two parts. Omnipotence and omniscience. And what comes out of that, he simply does, and nobody knows because they're not God. So God's got to start telling us something of it. And I have not seen your ear heard. We've only got a glimpse. We've only got a glimpse. We've seen the handiwork of God. Beautiful birds. 
Beautiful nature. What if he surprises us? I'm anxious for surprise. Surprise me, surprise me. That's what the bride says. Surprise me. Oh, look at these jewels. That's not just jewels. I got a tiara for your head. You're my queen. I'm going to crown you. Lavish jewels and robes on it. <clears throat> what about there? He's got hummingbirds. Nature never saw in the 6,000 years. And we lost a lot of hundreds, if not thousands of species are gone now. Fireflies that attract their attention. Little children. <clears throat> I was like a kid at the age of 30-some when I first saw my first firefly. <clears throat> I've known, but I haven't seen the flyers, fireflies in South America. Oh, I've been down there. But they say they're so big they can put them in jars and illuminate a room. I've seen pictures. It's called cold light, and science can't figure it. Because light isn't cold. What do you got fireflies that are. Look at the Aurora Borealis, the northern lights. Usually they're green color, white, and a little bit of red. What if he flashes more than rainbows? What, what, what if, right now the rainbow breaks into seven parts, and I suppose other parts too, if he could break it down more. What if he showed us what a rainbow reads one? <clears throat> Eyes not seen, you're hurt. Amen. See? So what lies in him? I don't know what lies in him. You don't either. But it sure be nice to be surprised to be around him. There's only one way to be around this by revelation. You can't be around any other way. There's no way you can make it. No way, no way. The fullness of God is made known. The secret of the mystery is revealed. <clears throat> God is now manifested. Now, this is the true phanero. Amen. This is the true word in the Greek <clears throat> that says manifest or appear, which means he is in his true real character so that you know that you know that you know this is God. Amen. He's not fooling anybody. Not that he would. <clears throat> no. But this is something that is really God so don't you worry about it. This is positively God. Now, the anointed man, Christ. <clears throat> What's he anointed with? The Holy Ghost. Anointed with the anointing, with the, with the fullness of God here. Now look at You and I are also anointed with a teeny weeny measure of that. But that does not constitute God as it constituted God in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, all the church of all ages, 6,000 years, and we're there 6 million years, and 60 trillion would never constitute God. <clears throat> it would merely indicate that God has shared his light. The same as God is sharing his sunshine out there right now. The same as God is sharing his rain. The rain falls on the just and the unjust. And God can even share his spirit anointing people and never give them light. That helps you to understand why these things are the way prophets said. <clears throat> Where once partly Moses had it, partly David had it, but here he's manifested in the fullness as 2,000 years ago. Deity himself standing on earth, God in his fullness to die for the sin of the people in order that he might bring to the church a sanctified light, that he might have the preeminence totally in his church to manifest every promise he last days. And I'm going to have to stop here. I'm going to conclude this saying. You remember a little while ago, <clears throat> I mentioned the fact they said, What about that body? What about that body? What about it now? Listen, let me tell you something. <clears throat> God can put that pillar of fire to one side, though he's going to put it over the over the uh, throne in New Jerusalem. But he'll never get rid of that body. He could take the body of Melchizedek and then disintegrate. I don't know what he does. Or he stores them. Don't ask me, ask God. I'm not a chip on the shore. You want to get across, something across you. I don't care what about those. That's not my business. But Jesus is my business. Yeah, amen. <clears throat> You're going to see him with the, with the scars eternally. He'll never be absent. And he's the head of the church. And we worship him. Because his is the government. And every good and beneficent thing comes through him as it always has from the beginning and will. Ageless eternities. <clears throat> Don't you talk to me as though the body's an animal or something's going on. Talk to me as civil as Christians. I threw that in there against my will kind because they're barbaric Christians and civilized. There's anointed and truly anointed. And I'm not fussing at anybody. I just want you to know this because I stand for the blood and I don't care what they say. That blood's efficacious. 
He died once for all, for sin is taken care of. The Holy Ghost is temporary. Oh, yes, the Bible, that's the Bible, Brother Man, I said so. But I want to tell you, Jesus Christ, that man, took a shape like yours and mine, divine Son of Almighty God, the icon of God, the image of God. In one God dwelt, the life was of God. Therefore, the life was in the blood was of God. It came back upon you and me. And that vessel, brother, sister, was raised up with the right hand of majesty on high. And he's on the throne right now. He's alive. How can anybody even suggest death to him or in some inanimate condition? The mediator, the intercessor, Go listen, the Holy Spirit that's going to mediate and intercede right now, that is not the same as him. <clears throat> Sir, there's a difference. <clears throat> so he's alive and he's well. And he's growing, as it were, with the magnitude of God. And he's increasing. You bet, as the bride increases, he increases. Another voice raised among the mighty waters, thundering through eternal ages, praising and worshiping Almighty God, that testimony to him. Oh, yes, he's real. He's alive. You bet he is. People might misrepresent him, but, but he, I trust by the grace of God he's represented fairly here. Uh, that's as far as we're going to go this morning. The Lord bless you. If it's disjointed, I'm sorry for you. We just live here. Let's rise and be with you. <coughs> <coughs> Heavenly Father, we hope that some good has might have been done this morning. Something said, Lord, that help people on the pilgrim journey. Help us all, Lord, to just love you a little bit more, to feel your presence a little bit more, which we believe we have this morning, O oh God. Not through anything of ourselves, but through this word, Lord, because it is this word that has life in us. This is that conduit, O oh God. And now by grace, somehow we, we're going to become conduits. We, this is the great thing, Lord, that's hard for us to understand, the light of a prophet who was that great conduit. O oh God, how, how do we ever, we can't ever get to his stature, don't even try to get there. But Lord, we just love to progress a little more than we are now. To, be, to bear and to forbear just a little more. To love and be loved a little bit more, Lord. To be kind and be kinder to you. All down the line, Lord. Just a constant reciprocation amongst the bride. Knowing out there in the world there's all this temptation, all this trial. They won't love us, they won't care for us, and that's certainly fine, oh God. But Lord, amongst the bride, it's a different story entirely. People built upon a word and the life in that word. And the life in that word's got to come forth through a people, Lord. It's got to come forth. That's it. That's it. We just can't look, Lord, for immortality. We know that is they're staring us in the face. They're staring somebody in the face. But, Lord, there is a light. There is a fruit. There are virtues, Lord. There are even gifts. All these things, oh God, we know they're there in their proper station, their proper position. And, Lord, we want to see them stationed in our lives according as we understand this to be the truth. And we have the truth in the inner man. And we know, Lord, it's that light that's going to produce the chemistry. God, help us this morning to have a chemistry that shows a light is there, and that life is of God. Yeah. We don't have any trouble, Lord, showing the word we've got a life, but oh, God, what a life. <clears throat> it's that spirit allowed of you, which we want to have completely set to one side, that the life which is of Christ might be manifest. As Paul said, I've been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. God in heaven, that's what we want to know in our own lives. Perhaps it's already there. We don't, we just haven't realized it. I don't, we can take it by faith. All of these things, Lord, I know it's there in embryo. But Father, I wouldn't be happy if I wanted grapes to just know I had a grape seed and just let it sit there. Merciful God in heaven, let the light that's in the seed, providing that seed is there, and we some, we've got to believe it is there, Lord, we do believe it's there. Let it come forth and show that it's bearing the grapes. Father, help us this morning all the way down the line so that we might be that bride that glorious within and without, by the grace of Almighty God. Father, don't let any person leave this building with, uh, unchanged. My God, may there be a better, a greater depth, and a higher height than ever before. Lord God, that they might know the height and the breadth and the length and the depth. And that love which passes understanding, they're brought of all, Lord. Father, let them know it this morning, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Wash every heart whiter than snow this morning. If it be sinful, Lord, in any way, shape, and form, whatever it may be, Lord, especially the sin... Father God of fornication and adultery against you, against your word, Lord. We know we know it's rife in the world in the, in the moral sense of the physical, but Lord, we know it's even greater in the church. Trust not in this church, O oh God. By the grace of God, wipe every stain out of our hearts and our minds, Lord. Get us away from that spirit, Lord, that would tend toward it in any way, shape, and form to compromise. But stand, Lord, even unto death, Father God. That's what was in the beginning. Let it be in the end. They love not their lives unto death. Standing right there. 
Lord, I know that there's going to be somebody who can stand here and just stand just in the way. Lord, as we say it this morning, out of your word, I know that. That's absolutely a foregone conclusion. It's got to be. There's no way out of it. No way out of it, Lord. It's, they'll stand right here, Lord. They're not going to be brought down because they're predestinated to the other side. Father, may the bride understand that, know that. May our minds soon be merged with thy truth, and coming together in a convergent, <coughs> converged, Lord, just come right together in that focal point, right looking into your face, and be changed and brought away in a rapture. Help your bride everywhere, Lord, upon earth. Bless preachers everywhere, preaching your word, Lord. Some aren't in the pulpit yet, three hours different between the coast, others just going in, others like us leaving, Lord. Oh, God in heaven, may things have been said and things to be said be of your will and of your nature, Lord, of your plan, O oh God, that people might come forth. Even as you, the prophet said so many times, I, the Lord, have planned it. Watch over day and night your water, lest any man pluck it out of my hand. Can't be done, Lord. No man can do it, Father, because it's in your hands. So unto thee we commend ourselves, O oh God, hoping we trust thee. That this is that hour of commending, Lord, in such a way there's no backing away, there is there from this word, O oh God. We have to say we said it. It's on tape. There's no way out of it. We said it, Lord. You've got to back it up somehow. Can't say we didn't, but we stand with the Lord. Not to hurt our men, not to hurt anybody within an organization, Lord, not by any stretch of imagination that way. Although we could be wrong, we could have bad imaginations. The Lord wouldn't want to hurt anybody in it, all, but want to disabuse the people themselves of what they're standing for and standing in, O oh God, because it's a perfect repeat of the word of the end time. That which was in the beginning. Father, help us to be that. People who are discerning and aware of you. Now be with us, Lord, in, in, in spiritual strength in the inner man, because we know that the soul prospers. All others shall fall into line. And now under the King eternal and more than visible, the only wise God be all power and honor and glory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Lord bless you.